Hi class, let's do some linear algebra. In the last lesson, we were talking about um, certain transformations of space given by left multiplication by a matrix. So for example, we had negative 1, 0, 0, 1, which was a reflection, and was uh, an example of a transformation of space of R2 in particular. So these are actually examples were examples of linear transformations of R2 to R2. We're going to be talking generally about what a linear transformation is. Definition. Let V and W be vector spaces. In particular, vector spaces over the reals. A mapping, say L, that goes from V to W is called a linear transformation If L of alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 is equal to alpha 1 of L V1 plus alpha 2 of L V2 for all VI in the vector space phi and alpha I being real numbers, the coefficients are real numbers. There's the definition, um, but there's, there's a lot packed in here, so let's take a moment to just dissect this. Okay, it means two things. It means L respects the vector space operations. So it means, one, you can add before and or after applying the linear transformation, and you'll get the same answer. So for example, L V plus W is going to be L V plus L W. It also means two, you can do scalar multiplication before and after applying L, before or after applying L, and you'll get the same answer. So L alpha V should be equal to alpha LV all the time. Okay, so we've got our definition of a linear transformation. And I'll just note that if L is a linear transformation from V to V, we say that L is a linear operator. Just some more vocabulary there. Let's do some examples. Example, integration in C, A, B, 2R. Remember what this means. These are continuous functions on the interval A to B, um, and these continuous functions are real valued. So say we take an F that is a continuous real valued function on this interval, and we can define L of F to be the integral from A to B of f of x. 
dx. And you'll remember from your calculus class that we can set up this equation. Say so, say g and f are both in here. So uh, we know just by definition that this is the integral from a to b of this composite function. We know from calculus that integration breaks up along a plus sign. We also know that we can take the scalars out front. And this is, of course, alpha 1 of fx plus alpha 2 of gx. There we go. All right, let's do another example. I'll allow you to work through this. So show that differentiation is a linear transformation L from C from differentiable functions to continuous functions on the same interval. This is an exercise for you. Let's do a non-example. Say we've got L from R3 to R2. It sends x1, x2, x3 to x1 plus x2, then the absolute value of x3, then 3x2 minus x3. All right. Say u is equal to 1, 1, negative 1, and v is equal to 1, 1, 1. Notice a few things. L of u is going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2. Um, then we've got the absolute value of x3, which is 1, and then we've got some linear combination of x2 and x3. So we've got 4 here. L of v is equal to 2, 1, 2. L of u plus v is equal to L of 2, 2, 0, which is 4, 0, 6. But L of u plus L of v is equal to 4, 2, 6. Altogether, this means that L of u plus v is not equal to L of u plus L of v. So L is not a linear transformation. All right, let's do another example. Say A is an m by n matrix. It is, we claim, a linear transformation from R to the n to R to the m. So, for example, sub-example, A is some matrix. This is a linear transformation from, well, this is a 2 by 3 matrix, so it's going to go from R3 to R2. And how do we know that it's a linear transformation? From the algebraic properties of matrix multiplication. We know from way back that A applied to x plus y is Ax plus Ay. And we also know that A applied to alpha x is alpha Ax. So there you go. It's a linear transformation. All we've done so far is given the definition of a linear transformation and a few familiar and unfamiliar examples. This was our introduction. 
Of course you'll have some lingering questions. Possibly the same question that we had last time. Can every linear transformation, a little bit more specific, every linear transformation on, say, Rn to some Rm be represented by multiplication by a matrix? We'll talk about this next time. For now, think on this. See you in the next class.